I come from a behaviorist, law-based religion. We care how you act. That's why we don't have a claim that if you look at another woman with lust, it's as if you've committed adultery with her. I, I am, as I said yesterday, I, I thank God for America's Christians. And uh, Maimonides said, if it weren't for Christians, the world wouldn't know about the Torah. So uh, <laughs> I, I'm a big Christian fan, but obviously Christianity and Judaism are not identical religions. Uh, and, and we have no equivalent that if you look upon another woman with lust, it's as if you have committed adultery with your heart. There's only one way to commit adultery in Judaism, and it's with a different organ. And I'm not being cute, I'm, I'm being very realistic. Uh, looking with lust is not a sin in Judaism. What's the, stance on porno what's the stance on pornography? So pornography, when I'm asked this question, you, just to you, put you on the spot, you by the did way. indeed. <laughs> uh, okay, so my my answer when it's raised on my radio show, I have a male female hour, and I'm very open about sexual subjects. I always ask if a wife calls me and says my husband looks at pornography. I, I, I found on his computer. I have one question: How is your in life of intimacy with your husband? Is it good? In other words, is the pornography in lieu of you or in addition to you? Mm -hmm. uh, and I know this is not a religious answer, mm -hmm. and I, I'm not even giving a religious answer. I'm giving mm -hmm. what I think is a moral and realistic answer. Men want variety. And uh, if adultery is a substitute for, if pornography is a substitute for one's wife, it's awful. If it's a substitute for adultery, it's not awful. That's, that is my unpredictable answer. Well, there answer. is a clinical rule of thumb that's akin to that, I would say. If you're trying to decide clinically whether someone's partaking in a habit, say use of alcohol, has reached the threshold of clinical significance, one of the things you do is ask the, the person you're assessing, now, is it interfering with your employment? Has it got you in trouble with the law? Is your family complaining? Does it stop you from doing other things that you should be doing? And so the judgment isn't the use of the forbidden substance itself. It's, it is in some sense consequentialist. And I'm not saying that that's an absolute, but it is a, it is a hallmark right. of clinical judgment. But but Dennis, you're making, I think, too big a gap between you know, behavior and where it comes from. And surely the 10th commandment is exactly that. You could expound everything Jesus said from thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife or another woman you're not whatever. Mm -hmm. well, you know, the whole point okay. of coveting, it begins in the heart. And I, I understand your Hebrew word for covet is a desire that doesn't stop halfway. Right, to take. It takes action. It's to take. Yeah. It's not, there's no ban in the 613 laws of the Torah on lusting. It do, I don't even know there's a tava is the closest you can get to lust in Hebrew. But okay. The, the, yeah. Okay, so let me ask so you about the, that. The, so the, the covet is critical. I can say, I can be attracted to my neighbor's wife. I can't want her. There's, there, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a difference mm -hmm. because it But what mm -hmm. about a single woman? I asked one of the great Protestant thinkers of our generation in a public debate in Phoenix. I asked them, so can a single Christian male look upon a single woman with lust? He can't be committing adultery. He's not married and she's not married. So is the real ban lust or is the ban on adultery? Yeah. I mean, at least for me, when I hear all of this from my own Orthodox perspective, it's bewildering because at least th from the tradition in which I am, it's not a morality question. It, I, even the word morality, it bothers me. The, at least in, in the Christian tradition that I participate in, the call is to be transformed. The call is to be free. That's the call. Christ is calling us to be free. And so the idea of like, can you lust or can't you lust or can you do this or not this, the answer is they are, we have desires in us and these desires tend to enslave us. They tend to pull us into themselves. And these laws are exterior ways for you to understand how it is that you can now be free from these desires. None of the desires are wrong. Like sexual desire isn't wrong. Desire to eat isn't wrong. None of these things are wrong. The problem is when they capture you. Mm -hmm. The subordination. Right. And so it's not, about, it's not about like trying to figure out if I'm sinning or not sinning. Like when, if I go to confession, I 
I ask forgiveness for all the sins I've done, voluntary and involuntary. It's like I'm sinning all the time. If you if you want to know, like every every you know all day long, I'm sinning. But the that's idea that's why you're so much fun. That's, right, that's what's so much fun. <laughs> but the idea is rather is rather that you know to to attend to my desires in the sense so that I'm not captured by them, so mm -hmm. that I don't become obsessed, so that I don't mm -hmm. fall into that. Mm -hmm. So to me, like the question of like legally trying to figure out like where I'm sinning and where I'm not. It's just like a, whew, it, 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 it pulls me into a world that it, I... So if a man has, and I know this case, I know a man who was saintly in taking care of his Alzheimer's wife who got Alzheimer's at the young age of 50 and, and watched over her and bathed her uh, for, for a, a, a decade. And then, so I would just ask, you asked me about pornography. So this man was faithful to a wife with whom he could not have relations, obviously, for a decade or more. I, it may have, I think it went to 15 years. Would he have been wrong in relieving his sexual tension uh, uh, w with, a, with a photograph? See, uh, I'm, I'm wondering if it's this, Dennis, maybe, and this is something that I had talked to people in my clinical practice about. So imagine there's the, the, and I guess we're into thou shalt not commit adultery, by the way, which is the next uh, commandment. You can imagine um, an erotic image that compels sexual desire. And, and I think that's part of what we're discussing, the morality of that, or its, its potential to be an implement to the instantiation of an ideal. You can imagine a situation where your desire is to, um, to sleep with your neighbor's wife, you're not acting on it. But the reason you're not acting on it is because she doesn't want to sleep with you. Now, it still seems to me that given that your desire is to undertake the act and the only reason that you're not able to manage it has nothing to do with your moral stance. It has to do with the impossibility of the action. Now, given it, I don't know how you would deal with that because oh, you he, he, that, that's a violation of do not covet. He's coveting okay. his neighbor's wife. It's as clear as a bell. 